Hello, and welcome to Beyond Common Business Secrets. I am your host, Tracy Watt-Serino. Consider me your guide on this journey to business success and personal growth. This is one of the things when it comes to business and personal growth and development, I believe that business is a spiritual game, right? You cannot, like you cannot um, not improve, right? You cannot not improve. I know that sounds funny. Um, if you're doing it right. So it's really interesting because when you are really diving into the growth of your business, you can't help but grow yourself. So oftentimes I will tell people that if you want to grow faster than you ever thought possible, start a business of any kind because it reveals so much about your own insecurities, your weaknesses, your um the areas of your life that are driven by ego, where you might be lacking in leadership, where you might be lying to yourself, like all these things are revealed. So um, today we are diving into a fascinating, fascinating topic that could absolutely revolutionize how you manage your time and energy. So today we're diving into time-saving tips based on your human design. So if you have ever felt overwhelmed by your to-do list um, or been struggling to find the, I always say quote unquote, to find the balance between work and life, then this episode is for you. Um, I, just as a disclaimer, I have, I want to share that I am absolutely obsessed with human design. I discovered it about a year ago, even though for quite a few years before that, when people would ask me about it, I would think I like, yeah, I know what that is. And it was about a year ago that I had a dear, dear friend of mine, um, Lauren Oberly, introduced me to human, human design, and I have been obsessed ever since. I... I have taken so many different trainings, classes, and certifications, and every single one of my teachers in the area of human design is like, oh my goodness, Tracy, you got done like eight years of training in in less than a year. So I just want you to know that this has just become a, a tool that I am absolutely obsessed with. And that is why I want to share it with you today. So exactly like, so what exactly is human design? Like if you've never heard of it, or if you have heard of it, um, in short, it is a system. It is just a system that combines the elements of astrology, the I Ching, the Kabbalah, and the chakras. And they are combined to create a comprehensive blueprint for your unique energy and personality. So when we combine all of this together, we get this like amazing, unique blueprint that is like what I'm talking like human design in general. It's what I'm absolutely obsessed with. So um, understanding your human design type can help you make better decisions. And this is going to be better decisions in your business, of course, but in your life, in your healing in your personal relationships, this can help you make better decisions all around. Um, it can help you align with your true nature. And ultimately, by using your human design to tap into your unique strategy and authority, you are going to ultimately save yourself so much time and energy. So, um, they're just, this is going to be like the simplified version, right? I want to keep this super simple so we can just pull out the, the secrets, like, right. We're here on beyond common business secrets. We want to pull out the secrets of how you can use your personal human design chart to save your, you so much time. So, um, there are five different human design types. So 
there are manifestors, generators, manifesting generators, projectors, and reflectors. So today we're going to explore your like specific time-saving strategies tailored to each type. So let's jump right in. So first up is manifestors. So manifestors um, are, they make up only about 8% of the entire population. <laughs> and as a manifestor, you are here to initiate and bring new ideas into the world. You're like birthing all the new, all the newness, all the new things. So your biggest strength is your ability to start projects and inspire others. However, you can easily burn out being that you are someone that doesn't have sacral renewable energy. So you can easily burn out if you don't manage your energy well. So my number one time-saving tip for manifestors is focus on what excites you most and then delegate the rest. Um, by providing it yourself with people around you that support you, you can either work in collaboration with others, you can delegate to your team, you can even <laughs> delegate to your family because you're initiating inspirational energy brings people in that want to help you birth this new idea. So by prioritizing your passion projects and handing off the routine tasks, you'll maintain your energy and productivity. So I can speak to manifestors better than anyone else because I happen to be a manifester. And what was the number, I used to feel so guilty early on in my leadership journey. I think it's being a female and having very strong initiating energy. I would sometimes just initiate everyone in the room and like, just get these crazy reactions that would just take me totally off the path for what I was trying to accomplish. So save yourself all the time, energy, stress, tears, whatever it causes, and understand that the, the excitement of being somebody that inspires and births new ideas is that sometimes you're going to um, activate other people that are not ready for this new vision of what you're birthing. Like I always think about like the iPhone, like think of how many people were like, no, thank you. I'm just going to keep my, uh, what did we have before it? It was like that, uh, um, uh, the flip, I know we had flip phones and those little pads with the little stylus pen. Like some people wanted to just keep those, like they were not ready. And so that's okay. Like think about if you're a manifester that think about it just like that. Like not everybody is ready for the greatest, newest technology and that's okay. Those aren't your people. So if you find that you've activated any of those people, and they're not happy about it, don't take it personal. Just move on to impacting and activating the people that are your people, the people that get behind you. This will save you so much time and energy and really um, reduce your stress level. So if you can focus on what excites you the most, um, because your energy is that initiating, you will run out of it, right? It's not sacral. It's not renewed. So really focus on what excites you most and then delegate. Now, if delegation is not on the table for you, that's okay. <laughs> you can um, use this when you are feeling really inspired and have this manifest or energy that is bursting within you and you can then set it down and come back to your initiation when you have the energy again. That is something that I did not know for the longest time. 
it is okay. Like you will learn to trust that when you need it, your energy will always be there. As long as you are focused on what really lights you up and gets you excited. So when you really prioritize what your passion projects are and just sort of handling like handing off and delegating out all your routine tasks, this is going to really help you maintain um, your energy and really provide maximum productivity. Like if you've ever been like, I don't understand. I was like, this is, this used to happen to me all the time. Like I would be working on a project for months on end and it just seemed to be dragging. And then all of a sudden I would get this like urge and I could get it done in a day or in, in a three day weekend. And I would be like that. It, like, was it just that I finally had the right ideas all come together? Was it the right resources? It's, this was like learning about this is just how I operate is sort of what I had figured out as my sort of go around long before I had discovered human design. But this is how it really works. Like where you can actually get done more than, you know, most people can get done in a month, in just a day, when you are in your alignment and you are following your personal um, strategy and authority. So that is part of like trusting the process. And the other thing is, is that if you are a manifester that wants to go even deeper on this, manifester, um, readings are my absolute favorite to do. So I would love to have a strategy session with you where we can really dive into the nuances in your human design chart and really share how you can maximize your energy to really, really um, be as productive as possible. So you can really grow those areas in your business that maybe have been lacking. So this is like my area of expertise. I love it. So definitely reach out if that's something that you want to dig into more. Next, we are going to dive into generators. So generators energy are the builders and doers. So generators have a renewable sacral energy. So this is sustainable energy that is sourced from within. So when you are engaged in meaningful work, and that is meaningful work, right? You need to still be aligning yourself with things that are important to you. So it's not about like saying yes to everything. I want you as a generator to be aware of saying yes to everything. So many of my generator clients, the biggest time-saving tip I ever share with them is pay attention to what you're saying yes to and make sure it's lighting you up, right? Like make sure it's lighting you up. When you start saying yes to the things that you truly are excited about or meant for, you will have so much more access to your true energy. Um, so that is really important. And you want to listen to your gut response because if you find that you're like, your gut response was like, no, I don't want to do that. But you said yes, because you, you're guilting yourself or you, you know, you're only committing to yes, because you want someone to like you, or you think it's supposed to be, you know, like you, you should say yes. This is where you're given full permission to stop shooting all over yourself and really do what feels best for you. So only commit to the tasks and projects that you feel genuine, like, oh, uh -huh, I want to do that. Like, that's for me. This way you avoid burnout and stay in your productive flow. This is where your true doer and builder generator nature will come from. So that is one of those things that just because you have as a generator, a renewable resource of energy, you still want to make sure you're aligning with what really lights you up, <clears throat> utilizing your um, personal strategy and authority in this way. So next we're going to move on to the manifesting generators. So you, you're sort of like a hybrid or 
I don't even like to really say a hybrid. I, I feel like <laughs> the best way to say this is you are generators with manifestor tendencies. So you thrive. So as a manifesting generator, you thrive on multitasking and variety. So, you know, when people say, don't have all these windows open and do all this stuff on your computer, that's actually okay for you. And the more nuance you dive into your chart, you will be able to see what areas you can go even more on this. <clears throat> Now, however, you might struggle with feeling scattered and, and being pulled in all different directions because you don't want to be pulled in all different directions all at once. So the best time-saving tip that I have for you is batch your tasks. So as a manifesting generator, if you are um, a podcaster, you want to batch create all of your podcasts, all of your content on one day. You maybe want to do all of your interviews on one day and then edit videos on another. You want to batch create things. And you anytime you can group similar activities together to maximize efficiency and minimize the time of switching between different types of work, one of the things... <laughs> that's really interesting is that you are multifaceted. You have a lot of interests. You may have um, been somebody that switches jobs often or within your job or career. Like if you work in a big corporate company, you maybe have been in a lot of different departments. And maybe people have said stuff to you like, oh, oh, you're changing again? Like, don't you know what you want to do? You are not designed to ever have to know that. You are designed to be like this. You know how they have those huge charcuterie boards? You are designed to make life your personal charcuterie board. You get to grab any little piece you want and continue to do what aligns with you. So follow your personalized strategy and authority and batch create things together and you will save so much time and energy and really start maximizing your efficiency. <laughs> so next, we're going to move on to um, my projector friends. So when you are a projector, your gift is your ability to guide and manage others. So you're here to share your deep wisdom and inner knowing for what is the thing that will make this better? How can you help people, you know, how can you guide people and, and manage others to optimizing their gifts? So that is the, the thing that is like so amazing about projectors. They kind of like project and pierce into you in this like just really beautiful way <laughs> that allows you to really feel seen. But it's crucial for you as a projector to wait for the invitations before acting. Um, so time-saving tips for projectors is create space for reflection and rest. You require a lot of downtime and rest. So if people have said to you your whole life, like, oh, why are you so tired? Or do, do, do. It is okay like for you to give yourself permission to rest twice as much as everybody else that you know. This will actually maximize your efforts. When you are rested, your um, ability to make decisions and perform at your best comes through. So your insights come best when you when you are completely well rested and have time to truly process your thoughts. So don't be afraid to literally schedule downtime on your appointment as if it is an appointment. This is essential to your productivity. I share this with all of my clients, you know, no matter what your energy type is. However, the more I work with 
projectors, I really have them come up with strategies to put those downtime and reflective journaling as um in rest as sort of like part of their client mix of what ends up on your calendar. So it's so, so important to honor that part of yourself. You will actually like it's like if you spend 30 or 60 days following your um strategy and authority, you'll notice, wow, I felt so much better every day where it didn't feel like work at all. Like I felt like I was resting a lot, but then when you look over the 30 and 60 days, you'll say, wow, I accomplished so much more because you were coming from this essential place of what I call one of the beyond common secrets is when you really master your energy, you're really able to master your time. So when you you know, just start digging into this, I encourage you like track it so you can really see. So lastly, we're going to talk about reflectors. So reflectors are the rarest energy type. Reflectors are like the mirror of energy from their environment. So if you're a reflector, you need to take time making your decisions and find spaces that feel good to you. So reflectors in a negative environment is going to produce more negative results than, than any other energy type. Because though all of us have open centers that pick up and absorb energy, being all open, you want to really guide and protect your energy it is so, so important for you to rest, make time for yourself, make decisions based on letting yourself get a full rest cycle and really what feels good. So time-saving tips for reflectors are design your workspace and daily routine around what feels right for you. When you're in a supportive environment, you'll naturally be more efficient and effective. Now, obviously, that's very general, vague, and that is true for everyone, right? Like for every single energy type, if you are in environments that are draining your energy in an unhealthy, negative way, eliminate completely if you can. If not, because sometimes it's family, sometimes it's like the work environment that it's just part of the job, but you love everything else about it, limit, limit your exposure to it. And don't make big decisions when you're in that space, like get time away from that energy when you're making the big decisions. And this is, this is going to be true for everybody. So really, really think this through, um, and know that all of these energy types are designed to work together. Like the ultimate experiment is, can you find um, a, a manifester and a generator and a manifesting generator and a projector and a reflector to all kind of work together in their most beautiful, harmonious way to birth the most amazing projects that the world has ever seen. Like knowing your human design allows you to attract more of the right people, places, resources into your world along with, you know, her, like it's almost like you're, you're getting higher quality output while not having to work as hard. And that has always been like my mantra. It's like, how can I create way more profits in less time so I can create more freedom. That has just been my mantra since I probably was 12 years old when I got my first serious jobs. And that is like the number one thing I teach my clients. And human design is a way for you to really optimize. Like, okay, how can I make this more profitable so in the most time-saving way and it's going to allow me more freedom? So if you are somebody that wants to dive even deeper into your human design, I will include um, the link in the show notes 
Um, I have three different ways that we can work together in the area of human design. I, if you fill out just the form, you can access your chart. Like I'll send you your chart and then you're, you can just go on about your business of discovering more and more about your human design on your own. If you want a reading that goes deeper into your human design, that is something that I do a deep reading based on your energy. And then I just send it over to you. Or if you really want to go the deepest level of really maximizing how you can optimize your human design energy, then we can um, book a one-on-one 60-minute strategy session. The things that you want to gather though, so here's the thing. What is most important? When it comes to truly figuring out your human design, you need to know your exact time of birth the city, the city, state, country that you were born in, you need those things to get to the most nuances. So um, there are some ways to figure out your human design if you don't know what time you were born, but that involves you doing a lot of research, calling the hospital and the city that you were born in. So um gather your birth certificate. Hopefully it has, you know, your time on it and place of birth and fill out the form. And then you can decide, do you want just, um, the, the free chart sent over to you? Do you want a deeper reading or do you want to go full on like one-on-one strategy for this? So this is one of, I mean, I use so many tools when it comes to helping my um, clients optimize their systems, their strategies, when it comes to healing, you know, layers of, you know, trauma and old wounds, just all sorts of things. We use so many tools to help this, but human design is such a fun tool because you can quickly and dramatically see sort of a leapfrog effect and you're able to heal lots of lots of um traumatic um even genetic wounds that you may have been unconsciously bringing into relationships and business decisions and um lifestyle decisions for years and years you are able to go so much deeper so much quicker so i highly recommend that you dig into this. It's one of my absolute favorite things. And like I said, I'm just obsessed with it. And this is sort of like, there you have it. The time-saving tips that are based on your human design by aligning with your unique energy type, you're going to be able to streamline your workflow and achieve so much more than you ever have thought possible with a lot less effort. So This is, like I said, this has been a very simple overview of human design if you're just, you know, learning about it. But to me, the real fun is in the details of your personal design chart. So if you want to dive into those nuances, I am so excited to hear about your journey. So reach out on social media, like send me a DM telling me what your um, what your human design energy type is. I would love to know. And as you d- dive into it and you start to figure out what your strategy is, share that with me too, because I am obsessed. I love, love, love it so much. And I love um, connecting people together that it's kind of based on their energy and you can tell how they'd work really well together. So that's just a super fun, uh, amazing Thing about as we keep continue to build a bigger community. You can also join us inside the free Facebook group that is called Beyond Common Business Secrets, where you can be a part of sharing different systems and strategies with a very supportive group. So join us over there. And as always, thank you so much for um, tuning in to this episode of Beyond Common Business Secrets. And I want to say congratulations on 
your, if this is your first exposure to human design, congratulations. I cannot wait to hear everything that you do with it. And I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening. So if you tune in on YouTube, subscribe there. If you tune in on Apple or Spotify or wherever you love to connect and listen to podcasts, please subscribe there and leave us a review. We love hearing your comments and every review that you write allows the different algorithm algorithms to share the podcast with more and more people. So please go ahead and forward and share this podcast with all your fellow business besties and all the business owners and entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in your life that you know would get tremendous value. As always, until next time, continue to keep pushing boundaries on what is possible and have the most beyond amazing day. And I will see you on the next one.